I am the Red Cyclone! Episode of the It Gets Better I Swear podcast. This is your episode for 7 7 2018. I'm your host, Louis Beans, and I'm here with Mike with the Mike. What's up, what's up? Good to see man. So, how you been? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, a lot of things going on. Um, I just want to get into this really fast because it's a big part of our comic book history and our comic book love. Go ahead. Um, the passing away of Steve Dicko. Ah, uh, yes. Um, and could you elaborate on exactly why St- Steve Ditko is such a monumental figure in comic books? So Steve Ditko is the co-creator of Marvel Spider-Man. He's also the co-creator of Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. Um, he's very known for his first Amazing Spider-Man run. Uh, he's the one that drew Amazing Fantasy Part 15, which is probably the highest. If you own that book, you mm-hmm. own Spider-Man kind of thing. And then... Um, he did a lot of work for he did a lot of um quiet work too he did a lot of books still throughout his career he was still drawing to a lot of his 70s and 80s it's just he didn't use his name really wow yeah okay he did a lot of things like under the books and stuff like he uh he had he had like a big thing with stan lee because stan lee always said that uh, it was creation and stuff like that stan lee always got the fame but no one and no one ever credited steve dicko with the credit as spider-man as well there's always really? stan lee made wow. this really like, but if you ever see stan lee stan lee stan lee but you never see the co-creators of things the so spider-man is the one that well see maybe i'm different because i actually s- seek out the information so i've always i've always seen that like i know about the whole batman thing where they yeah. really screwed those guys over but i know what you mean when it comes to spider-man yeah it wasn't it wasn't as in he got screwed off of no, 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 it wasn't that bad no no no, it was more that he never got the credit the recognition deserved. from the yeah, people. Because he's the one that originally created the Spider-Man suit. Mm-hmm. It, the mm-hmm. Spider-Man suit of now is his design. So, so. Th- that means that they've gone back to that one? Because I know like, they, they do mix it up. Yeah. Well, his design was the original look with the webbing, the red and blue, mm-hmm. and everything like that. And then it, it evolved from there. But it always, that was the original take on what the Spider Man suit should look like. Okay. Did they, does he ever list his inspiration for, for that that hero? Actually, I think it was more the fact that it was a Spider Man. It was a spider. So he wanted to make the look of a spider kind of thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he put the webbing the webbings and stuff like that but he also wanted to make it look like someone made it he didn't want it to make it look like fancy that it was made for him he wanted so it looked like a fucking 16 year old made it well, I, did, I, did, did they ever go into why it's red and blue though that's so weird that's superman oh really oh uh, they're, they're vibrant colors so they're really they stand out colors red and blue that's interesting okay that's i mean not for nothing that is the opposite of what you think when you think of a spider though yeah you usually think black or brown yeah you know something like a tarantula yeah, yeah. but it was red and blue because it's, uh, i'll say more it was superman captain america those were like the big characters at the time and it, it stood out like the red and yeah, blue yeah. really stood out in pages and stuff like mm-hmm. that and i think that was it and also the fact that they also still wanted to make it a thing that kid would make so a hero, a kid's mind would be a hero should wear red and blue because it stands out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's and he also responsible for the uh, Doctor Strange, which is just recently, well, had a movie a couple of years ago and was part of the big uh, Avengers: Infinity War and all that stuff. And he he's the one that originally created create the design and all, and that was one of his famous creations as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he's died at 90 years old. 
Um, but yeah, that's a piece of Dicko. And thank you for Spider Man because Spider Man is such a big part of my life. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, yes. that's that's the epitome of leaving a legacy that'll last way long after you. Exactly. And um, yeah, Spider Man is that character, and that was something with me that like, always stuck with me. The Spider Man was always my favorite character. That was the character I related to the most. So hearing the news it got me kind of sad because yeah, Spider Man is such a it's such a standpoint for me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Yeah, same thing with Stan Lee. Like when Stan Lee passes away, I'll probably break down like a girl and cry. <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy how much of an influence a comic book has more than people in your life, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, but it's mentality. also because it comes to you almost unfiltered. You you know you're getting into something when you buy a piece of skin because a comic book is an artwork. Yeah. So you know you're buying a piece of art, and it's basically just you're taking someone's imagination into your hands, basically. You know, exactly. uh, like somebody thought had to think of the words to put on the page and think of the images to draw. Like literally, you're holding somebody's imagination. So it, it is yes. powerful. Yeah, and um, like honestly, I could tell you a lot of people in my 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 life and people that I know around them, uh, the lack of a father figure, kind of things like that, and comic books was a big thing in that sense of morality and how what's good and what's bad and how you should be good in this sense. And like Spider Man was a big nucleus of that, hmm. of how to treat people right, how to be good and not be good and not let your ego get in the way of you being good. This is true. And that was something about Spider-Man that always intrigued me. Also, another thing that I really th- think that Spider-Man um, should be champion for is kind of like humility, man. Because he's never a boastful, a boasting character. He's never a prideful character, but more often self-deprecating. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so th- th- that's a real reason why it's easier to attach itself to a character like Spider-Man. Yeah. Who's always and, full of doubt and whatnot? Yeah, and he went through everything. He was broke. He was rich. He lost it all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he had his mind swiped by a person smarter than him, and was mad that he didn't get his degree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a lot true. of things like that. And like again, like I'll tell you, like Spider Man has such a big impact in my life and shit. So like for me to see that, it hurts a little bit. Hmm. Yes, so thank you, Steve Dicko, for your work and what you made Spider-Man. So be... R.I.P. Pour one out. Yeah. So yeah. Or oh, web one out. <laughs> yeah. Um. Other than that, uh, wait, yeah. Wait, before we move on, who created Thwip? Was it him? Or was it Stanley? It, it was him and Stanley. Him and Stanley oh. had a. Him and Stanley had a close corroboration of the character. As much as people don't say it was more of Stanley, him yeah. and he had a lot of say into the character as well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for the first like few well i guess the first 20 issues and then that's when i think jack kirby went on after 30 i think oh interesting okay cool cool no not jack kirby um uh john romina uh, romina john, john romina uh-huh. yeah. really see i didn't know that yeah so yeah it, it, it's it's crazy and he's also responsible for a lot of designs of spider-man's main villains as well so like Scorpion and Green Goblin and uh, Lizard and uh, Sandman and yeah, a lot of the key uh, interesting. Okay. culture, um, a lot of those key villains were created by Stevie Goodico and Stanley as well. So basically like his classic animal villains. Yeah. The old school, most identifiable, they have on the unique color scheme, but yeah. they're closely, you know, it's just you hear their name, Spider-Man. It doesn't matter. Yeah. They could be named exactly. after an animal, but in your head, Spider-Man, like, there's a million scorpions. There's a yeah. guy in Mortal Kombat who throws a spear at you, but if you just say scorpion, I instantly think Spider-Man. Yeah. You know, so, okay. So, yeah, so recipe Steve Dicko, thank you for all your work and your, your credits for Con Book Universe and for Spider-Man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, so... Unfortunately, bringing in the podcast on some bad news, but I mean, listen, it's don't let the fact that he's gone put you down too much. Let's let that be uh, inspiration to celebrate the person's work. Yeah, exactly. So, like, take the time now, go back and look at some of 
all yeah, of definitely. all you of know, the power. You, you know what? Um, you're talking about that right now. I think for this week until uh, Sunday, um, you could get the Marvel Universe app. Okay. The Marvel Unlimited app. That's the comic book app they have for like mm-hmm. two cents as an Ant Man. Gotcha. You could get the month for two cents. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, okay. You could read probably every single Steve Dicko and Stanley book. Wow. Uh, okay. I actually, honestly, I when I first got the app, I started reading all the original Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man comics. Mm-hmm. Like, and you never believe how good Stanley's writing was. Like, if you ever read a Stanley comic, definitely okay. go back to Spider-Man because that's probably some of his strongest writing. Can you give me like an 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 issue number that he was writing? Like um, a time one, period. Well, Stan Lee was writing for the first good hundred and something books. Okay. Gotcha. Um, he's the one that had the responsibility of the Gwen Stacy death, um, uh, Harry Osborn's overdose on drugs, and Green Goblin. Well, him finding out Green Goblin's on Osborn. A lot of those big key highlights, him teaming up with Fantastic Four for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of those, the original uh, Sinister Six when they first came out, things like that. Stan Lee wrote a lot of that chunk and a lot of that storyline is going into four. Also, it, it, it shows the nerdy side of Peter Parker and him growing up in high school very awkwardly and very. Because they kind of, like, down the road, they kind of made Spider Man look like a good looking dude. Mm-hmm, when mm-hmm. supposedly the reason why Steve Dicko drew him the way he was because he was a nerd. They yeah. wanted him to make him look ugly and not fitting in, things like that. And Spider Man was the one that gave him the confidence to be what he was. Yeah. And, yeah. And yeah. So, like, if for two cents this month, go on the Marvel Old Unlimited. Um, I put Jabstar on it. He's been reading Fantastic Four a lot lately. Okay. Um, I've been telling, uh, like, it's a really good app if you want to read history of Marvel or say, for instance, you want to read the Finney Gauntlet before you go see Infinity Wars or see, uh, read some Ant-Man books before you see the new Ant-Man movie. For two cents for a month, that's not bad at all. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So. Regular books is like four ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, for perspective, exactly. Yeah, but appreciate the art, appreciate the stories, appreciate everything that it is comic books. I still love comic books to this day. I don't collect them the way I used to, but these digital formats really help me stay into on top of everything mm-hmm. because I'm able to read it because I have I have Comicology which is five dollars a month and then I have the Marvel Unlimited app. Comicology gives you a lot of free books, so I was able to read most of the Power Ranger uh, Power Ranger series. Which if you're not reading that series, if you like Power Rangers, you're not reading that series. That's the fucking best version of Power Rangers like to date. Like gotcha. they're violent as hell. They have great story. They have mature stories. Everything you want as a kid when you wanted to see Power Rangers be more mature and shit, mm-hmm. you see this in this comic book. There's uh-huh. yeah, okay. there's killing. There's everything in these comic books. Um, the first four trades are are able uh, on that comicology uh, unlimited. Okay. <laughs> first five trades are available for free. You read through the five first trades. Um, every three months they add more. Um, they also started the Gogo Power Ranger book, which was a side story. It's sec- their second comic book of the base five teenagers and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, the, Sh- the Shattered Grid has been a very probably one of the top ten books of the last six months. Okay. Uh, and it's a small studio. Bloom Studios is a really small studio, and they're still doing it. And Hasbro gave them full direction for their comic books for the next five years as well. Man, that's that's a lot of faith. So yeah. yeah, and honestly, I think what's gonna happen with Beast Morphers is that one of the writers from the comic book is gonna write Beast Morphers. So oh, I'm really, sure. yes, I'm really excited about that. If they do that, that means they are listening to what the fans want in Power Ranger series going going further. Oh, you know? Yeah, yeah, okay. It's, I see. I didn't even yeah. know that. That's cool. Yeah, it's 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 a good time. It's a good time. Is that um, the first time that that they're doing anything of that caliber? Letting somebody who's influenced other mediums do that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Nice. One thing, uh, you know what? And we talked about this on the last cast with Hasbro, and I honestly I had nothing but positive things for this. Um, but we do a Power Ranger monthly uh, monthly uh, podcast with my co-host on that one, Tenacious T. 
and we do a lot of the reviews of the current series going through forward. Right now, we're up to uh, uh, Simple Fury. That will be our next cast this month. Um, it does a lot of ups and downs with Power with Again, the, the Power Rangers always had the same formula for every single show. If you go from Mighty Morphin to now, they all had the same formula. Uh, five to six teenagers, very kiddie-ish, very had made sure that had moral support, um, that had uh, morality in the show, like caring is caring, be good to others, don't eat meat, drink the only juice bars, drink protein, don't drink alcohol, no smoke, don't do this, don't do that. They always were goody goody teens and stuff like that, but they're supposedly supposed to be teenager attitudes. Yeah, no, that's k- kind of hilarious. Yeah. You mentioned all that. But it always had the same formula for every single show. I, even though some stories are better than the others, it was always the same exact form. Mm-hmm. So I'm, yeah. hoping, I'm hoping for Beast Morphers, if they actually get to Boom Studios, some of the guys who write that that show, I'm, wish, I'm just hoping for more of open things, things to open up. Like, I still understand it's a kid show, yeah. but you could see like how like not, i'm not gonna say batman because batman was ahead of his time and was very mature for a kid's show yeah that's true but you had hookers and guns and gambling like yeah you had some very adult yeah adult but i would say more like maybe the teen titans original show like spider-man like it has more of a mature standpoint mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. still has morality and like moral stories and just like, fun for kids as well yeah spider-man is a good example that that yeah. channel 5 spider-man very much had a lot of drama yeah and that was like the mature edge to it because it wasn't so much the violence but yeah it was yeah that's a good like, that's a really good pull but then you also had spider-man cracking jokes which were hilarious and mm-hmm in that sense so i'm really hoping a lot of good things for beast morphers i'm actually ha- excited for the the one they're using which is the go busters i've been watching the go busters because on the youtube channel they have the whole series dubbed in it, uh, not dubbed but subtitled english and i've been really enjoying the series like they're like the fucking uh secret agents and spies and stuff and their weapons all go into that like one dude has a camera that turns into a sniper rifle kind of shit so it, it, there's a lot of cool things in that series it's very secret agent which they never really did in this series Mm. They did kind of Indiana Jones's with uh, Operation Overdrive. They did kind of the cops thing in SPD, but they never did like James Bond, secret agent kind of style Power Ranger. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely different. So I think it's going to be a really good thing. I think I'm excited for it because if they do go with one of the boom writers and they already have known to make, because even the comic books are not directly like mature, like straight up like mature audience only kind of thing they still have the the kiddie-ish stuff in from power rangers but they 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 evolve it okay. and that's something okay. like that. but yeah nice. comicology 5.99 a month i think it's part of amazon you can read a lot of the shattered grid and you can read a lot of the power ranger comic books i actually been going back to the old school intro comics um that's just me but I, I there's a lot of stuff available and then also two cents for this month uh marvel unlimited definitely check it out yes sir yes sir do that get you some good stuff so uh, what you've been doing because i kind of took that over from the beginning no, no problem <laughs> um so i've been keeping abreast of a lot of stuff that's been going on mostly some calcom news has been popping up um there's been more than just that but recently there's been people prominent uh what would you call them? Leakers? This, this is an article from Event Hubs talking about prominent leakers claim Sea Viper Necro Q. Uh, let's not just read the title. Let's go. Sea Oro, Sea Viper Q Necro, and potentially one other character. Uh, also in that list is included uh, Sodom from Alpha Alpha Two and Three. But we know him from Final Fight as the guy with the two katanas. Um, so there's just a lot of... I don't know if these guys are people that are <laughs> working at the company and seeing like development. But there's a lot of very insider terms like the, saying that these, we've seen that these characters may be in development. Uh, just there may be... Let's see. Um, also, this is not the first time that they've had these exact same names. And this is what I mean, that it's more than one leaker. 
there's another one named uh flotron who's i guess he's a he's a specific event hubs user does he rap i don't know maybe he does (laughs) and maybe the only way he raps is to freestyle because he just predicts everything so but he had made a very credible um prediction of the leak roster for season two and he predicted it to a t and this was before it was even announced so again we don't i don't know who these people work for or what they do for a living but they're just leakers and usually they pop out around the you know around around this time because it's almost the end of season three for street fighter because there's only two characters left and we know who they are so i guess this is just the yeah tiger tiger mr tiger himself sagat and Which i think he's gonna like i said before i think he's gonna go last out. yeah he's last and the next the next character who we don't really know who he is is g um there's also heavy speculation on what that character is exactly i think there was some um details because there's street fighter 5 has character cards yeah. and they usually give you like a little uh, backstory or just a little bit of detail about the characters and stuff and so I think he, uh, G says things, something that alludes to him being the president uh, I think of the United States so I don't know what that means is he the president is he a candidate is he like a president from the future or the past I don't know because he just looks crazy he's like, he looks like a buff Abraham Lincoln with, with like, <laughs> blonde ass hair which you know Lincoln didn't have blonde hair yeah. And there's this um, another thing that's been uh, plaguing Street Fighter Five is what people are starting to to question. What is the gold motif? And he's the character that has gold in his character. It's like is I don't know if it's tattoos or not, but he has like these markings on his body. Okay. And if you look at the, some of the the high res art, you can see one of the ones on his arms is the continent of the U.S. So <laughs> what does that mean? Like, does he have the, you know, does he have the world all over his body? I don't know, but you can he see like, the whole world. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, or maybe on his arms, cause he's fucking jacked. But anyway, the character has gold markings on him. And, you know, so clearly the gold look and, you know, you see, you seen the presentation of the new game. So since our condition. The way it looks, you know, like a movie set and all that. So he might be the the main uh, catalyst behind all this. I don't know. I love gold. <laughs> Maybe he just loves gold. <laughs> He's just Scrooge McDuck. Is he from uh, San Francisco? Where he's from? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Because that's where they got the 49er name. Oh, yeah, the gold rush. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, a true story. But if you look at him, if you yeah. think about human beings and Scrooge McDuck, you could say he's a real life Scrooge McDuck. Because okay. he's got the he's got the, t- the long top hat. He's got the scruffy big beard, which can be you know like Scrooge's uh, cheeks. You see how his feathers on his face are. Yeah. Have they show trailers with him? He's only in the intro trailer for the for arcade edition. So they haven't shown him. The cr- crazy thing is, they showed recently something for Saget, and not him. It might be connected to the same part. Is it the guy fighting Ryu? Like yeah. in front of a giant statue? Yeah. But it's like a smoky background and, and, yeah. and like there's lights on it. Yeah, so it's, it's the same. Yeah, it's, just, it's a part of that intro. So he has a piece of that intro. There's just him in front of this giant. Um, it's like, well, okay. You know how Street Fighter Five the motif is like the world. So yeah. you the, the main thing is like there's a giant map visible at all times. Mm-hmm. So that's you see him in front of a giant world map basically okay. that has like a little v symbol on it i guess v for victory or v for five if you want yeah. and it's him doing the uncle sam pose the i want you yeah I so All right, and we're going to take a little break right here just to remind you to follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, also on SoundCloud. What we do is we have this podcast, the Ikki Spit of Podcast, 
Um, we also have the Wrestling Babble podcast that's hosted by Merc with the Mic, who's a frequent guest on my show. And that should be on Merc with the Mic on SoundCloud. We post those on YouTube as well. So you can check the Merc with the Mic podcast out on his YouTube channel, which is also Merc with the Mic. And also, you can catch the It Gets Better by Square podcast, as well as the various other playthroughs on the Red Cyclone Inc. YouTube channel. Thank you. Who the fuck is G? I don't know. My <laughs> my bet is he's just a brand new character and it's gonna completely let everybody down because that's what Capcom do, you know. <laughs> Cody can't Cody's probably gonna be the only really good thing out of this season. I'm telling I'm calling well, it now. Sakura. No, no, no. I'm just cause people weren't like player base wise, they weren't feeling her as much because she dipped off really quickly. Um I it's, sag it. I think it's I, been some Everyone's been looking forward to it. Here's my speculation. He's not going to be the same type of character. I think I, I'm not 100% on this, but I think Ono or somebody else related had said that he's not going to be a traditional fireball character like he used to be. Uh, because this is this a guy post defeat to Ryu. Because storyline wise, he hasn't fought since Street Fighter 2. Uh, they should have gave, like they, they gave him a pop belly. You know, there was some really interesting <laughs> art. Uh, I, I'm gonna send you some because I, I, I saved it a long time ago. There's some really interesting art of people's interpretations of characters for Street Fighter V. Yeah. There was Zangief that had like this cool um, traditional Russian gear on. There was there was Blanca with a pot belly, like drinking a martini because he he got a job in an electric plant and all he does is yeah. just sit. He lays on his ass and just powers like a generator all day. So he doesn't fight anymore. There was Cammy who like had given in to the Killer B thing. There was Vega who got fucked up and he like a cyborg. <laughs> and the picture he's he, he's holding uh, Sakura by the head like it, it's creepy. It's, it's, Ryu went crazy. Out. Ryu went crazy and he's in a straight jacket. You gotta find that link and post. It. Yeah, there's a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch of them. Gal is fat at a bar. It's just it's it's pretty good. It's pretty. Right, good. Ken should be in the same thing. He just had kids. I, there's no Ken, but uh, Honda is the head of the Yakuza in Japan. Ken, like so Ken should be Ken Honda. should be like uh, like like Daddy Daddy H like Triple H. Oh, he's just a big buff daddy in a suit all the time. Yeah, big beard. He's a beard because the kids don't let him sleep. And his kid, his kid is just a badass martial artist. He has kids. Know. He had a second kid. Oh yeah, that's right. And what well, you see him in you see him in four, don't you? Yeah. I know in one of the games he gets punched in the dick. Yes. <laughs> by his son. By, by what's his ah, I forgot. Mel, I think it is. Yeah. Mel is his son. Um oh. and he just yeah. punches him right in the ding the dingleberries. Um but yeah, there's a there's a bunch of stuff that is a mystery still, but hopefully this leak list is true because I want to see Viper in the game. I don't give a shit. I can deal so, I can live I can live without Q. I can live without Q or Oro, but I want to see Viper in this game. So, who, who were the ones from the the, the leak? What were the characters again? Just Oro, C Vi Oro, C Viper, Q, Necro, uh, and Sodom are the ones that like they're saying are highly likely to be the next ones. Yeah, C Viper was very popular. Yeah, she was. She made it into Marvel Three, and oh, she made it into Ultimate Marvel Three. Um. I really like her design. It's simple, but like there's enough flair on her, and the fact that she uses gadgets and stuff that changes like the the visual flair. So she has the electricity with the punches, the jets on her shoes, or why she has like the flame kicks. Um, and she has like and the same. Oh, also she has a connection to Rashid because they use the same whoever it is that supplies their tech. It supplies it to both of them. Okay, and like, then she in his also story. She shows up. She also gives you like the SNK feel of a character as well. Like, she looks like an SNK, a SNK character more than mm -hmm. a Street Fighter character. This is true. This is true. Um, but like, yeah, out of those characters, I'm. I would rather them just go to another game and put so many third strike characters in this game now. Yeah. Um, because I don't like the feel. You're not gonna give them all parries, you know. 
So, and the other thing I, I liked about characters that were in Street Fighter Three Third Strike was that they had three different supers. Yeah. Um, also, if you've played the the what do they call it? The event, uh, not quests. The event uh, challenges. Yeah. The one last week was a, the, a special Ryu called the Master. Yeah. And his deal was he he's incredibly strong. He parries everything, but he also has a second super, yeah, sure. which is not in the game. So this might be a hint that going towards season four. That there may be two supers added, which would be great. Of course. Because again, I'm not gonna sit here and say that when Street Fighter 4 came out, it was the best game in the world. It was horribly unbalanced. It was fun as shit. I love Indestructible as a theme song. Still love that. But yeah, like, and they took it out and it pissed me off. I, I love know, that. Thing. I know. I downloaded that thing. That I great know. Song. You forget about that, but when you hear it, yes. I, I'm not gonna play. Okay, I'm not gonna sing it. But it, if, we, if we can't get copyright on it, that should be the opening. That should be the song. It just, okay. Right. I love that. Yo, I honestly, <laughs> I found out the real band. I found a real band. Like it's a legit band that made that. To be honest with you, that's mm-hmm. what sold me on the game. That first few yeah. trailers was yeah, really trailer. It was so really young. good. Yes. It was really good. And I remember not a lot of people liked the art style, but that first trailer though of Ken and Ryu fighting with that song, it was just like, yo, I gotta get this game though. You know, the art style, like I it, it you know what? I, I kinda felt where they were going with it and I, I actually dug it when I first saw it with the with the whole art behind them when they struck and shit. I thought that was pretty cool. It gave it the effect. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also the fact that they wanted to go with three models, but 2D fighting, mm-hmm. it made sense. It made a lot of sense. It was an innovation for like fighting games, period, because they kind of were the first one, because Guilty Gear hadn't come out with it yet, yeah. where they did the fully 3D on a 2D in that style, like straight up, this is not a 2.5D game, this is a yeah. 2D game, but these models and stages are 100% 3D. So, yeah, they were trying to first. No, because they weren't trying to do that art style. Like yeah. you see how it's painted. Yeah. So so Mortal Kombat was doing 3D models and 3D environments fully. Yeah. But Street Fighter was taking that and painting over the two the 3D with the 2D, so it still looks like it's it looks like art. Yeah. That makes so that's sense. like that thing that that's the difference between like Guilty Gear and Street Fighter Four. I don't know about Street Fighter Five so much because. It's not really, it doesn't look like art anymore. It look, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't look like moving, moving um, artwork like they were going yeah. for. It just looks more like this is a stylized 3D, stylized 3D, 3D model. Yeah. But it's, it has to do with like the presentation. But I know what you mean. Um, Cause in that case, you would say Tekken was like the first one, but yeah. they were doing a stylistic thing. But the, the, the thing was, I was going to mention, yeah, it was cool. Um, Street Fighter Four's initial look and stuff, but they didn't perfect that style until I want to say Super. Because if you, here's one of the things you might not remember so much because it was it's a long time. It's been a while. Oh nine and Street Fighter, it's Street Fighter Four. That's nine years ago. Yeah, almost exactly. So when it came out, it had those filters that you could put on. Like if you played the game, you got those two cool filters where your characters were like shimmer. But it yeah. would also give them like a really hard outline. And that's kind of what they were going for. But if you don't put the filters on, it doesn't look like that. So the opening intro with those two fighting, you never really got that unless you use, unless both characters use that uh, filter. So yeah. that's a little weird tidbit. But like as it went on, it got better. So if you compare things like that to Street Fighter V, the arcade edition is already better than the default. Yes. <laughs> you know that. I know 100%. that. 100%. Now, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to apologize for 4 coming out. And 4 was fine. But I will say Ultra Street Fighter 4 is definitely a better game than Street Fighter 4. Yes. Like, once it was a, a complete, uh, uh, not even a complete package, because I don't want to diss Street Fighter 4, because it had way more than Street Fighter 5 did at the beginning. It had the song. The song, but it had arcade mode, dude. Like yeah, the, it, had, it had legit arcade mode. It had it was a, like a straight up fighting game. It didn't come out with no F, no um, esports BS. But 
over time it became a better thing super street fighter 4 added second super second ultra excuse me because again we remember when the game first started they only had one ultra yeah. um and then on to arcade edition that added more things a little i think that was the one that added red parry not red parry oh, excuse me red focus yeah um and then ultra there was the one that added like more characters more stages but it also added the addition select which unfortunately it wasn't balanced so people couldn't use it in tournament really mm -hmm. but that's okay here's the thing that a lot of people don't know about ultra edition is that a lot of the the ex characters those are basically street fighter 5 characters yeah like Ken was one that got like an overhaul hurricane kick in that mode. Cody had a lot of different stuff. Uh, Ryu had a lot of stuff that is is present now. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that they did with Ultra Street Fighter Four, um, which was kind of like okay, you guys are beta testing the next game really, but it was it was packaged so well it didn't matter. Yeah. So I'm not against seeing another season, and if they change the name for the next season, I don't really care because like at this point we know there's gonna be at least one more. Yeah. So I don't know. So I have like the chronological timeline for Street Fighter. Mm -hmm. um, they have Street Fighter One being the first one, which is the first one. Okay. Alpha Two being the second one. Really, Alpha Two? Interesting. Okay. And Alpha Three being the third one, because Alpha One and Alpha Two are just a, same, the same game, just connected. Oh yeah, okay, that makes a lot more sense. Alpha okay. 3, just because of Nash's presence in the game, I think it, it, it goes into it and also builds more towards the Shadow Low. Yeah, Shadow it, does, Low, it literally uh, does, yeah. Street Fighter, Ultra Street Fighter 2 after Alpha, which is pretty much all the characters in Street yeah. Fighter 2. And yeah, and then the presence of Akuma and everything like that. And that's mm -hmm. it. Well, Alpha had the presence of Akuma, but. No one knew it, but when you were playing Street Fighter 2, you never knew nothing about Akuma. But Alpha was like, oh, yeah, Akuma. Yeah, the only ones who supposedly know about him are Ryu and like somebody. That's it. Uh, Street Fighter 4 is right after Street Fighter 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Ultra, well, Ultra Street Fighter 4, which I think some characters had alternate endings in yeah. Ultra yeah. Street Fighter 4. So you had two different endings and certain characters and whatnot. Street Fighter V at Create Edition is the next one, which is pretty much the one current now. Mm -hmm. And then Street Fighter Third, Second Impact, and then Street Fighter Third Strike are the last two. Yeah. Yes. And that's the, um, last wall. that's the wall. So if you want to go through stories and all the characters that he just mentioned that gonna may be appearing in two thousand five, you can look through that history and know who they are. Yes sir, yes sir. So um and other news regarding fighting games, this is, is this week two that you've had your stick or is week one? Uh, week one, I haven't had time to really like play, play, but when I have, actually, I've been playing a lot of Dragon Ball Fighters. Nice. Um, How's I that? just, how's that, that feel? It feels great. It feels like Marvel's Capcom 2. Oh, okay. Okay. And like, I feel like Marvel's Capcom 2 playing it. Um, I did replace, I did replace the, the square. Uh, plate with the octagon because it I, I do tend to use characters more with half circles than charging mm -hmm. um, So like my characters in Street Fighter would be Ken, Ryu, and Chung Li um, okay. the past, And then Cody, Cody became one of my favorite characters um, And then um, and like Street Fighter 4, Ultra Street Fighter 4, I usually use uh, Ken, Ryu, or Cody as well And then also like the El Frente because ah, he's a luchador yes. Even though a lot of people hated him, I liked him. Um, and then I um, also in, in Dragon Ball uh, Fighters, a lot of the moves are half circle stuff. They're not char There's not a lot of charge moves in that game. It's a lot of half circle and fast paced action. Um, if you wanted something like Marvelous Capcom now, that would be the game to get. Even mm -hmm. though what I've been hearing that Marvel uh, Marvelous Capcom um, Infinity may be getting a re overhaul. Kind of like how Street Fighter Five did uh, arcade edition. I was gonna bring that up too in the news. That's yeah. one of the, that's one of the the thing that's up in the air. I was gonna yeah. bring that up is that there were rumors that of an uncanny edition. Yes. I don't the remember where that came from. I don't. Yeah, know. I read it in um, where I read it at. I, I think I read it on um, Kaduko. Oh, Kotaku. Okay. Exactly. I read it yeah. on there. 
that there's a possibility because they because Capcom kind of wants that game in tournaments and right now that game is not really present in tournaments it's still Marvel Capcom 3 that's in the tournaments yeah the, the, so, the thing I have read was I think it was either event hubs or another another fighting game website I posted up some people close to the to the to the development of the game are like uh the reason why it would be a thing was because marvel definitely wants that for the next set of movies because it's still a platform it's not it's not totally burnt out so they want to be able to to have it because the uncanny edition obviously would have anything that was missing x-men yeah. all that stuff but the the thing that's coming from capcom is that that game is a financial disaster and yeah. all the the ill will towards it is like it, they don't know if this is worth the risk so yeah uh, um i think adding the x-men characters may get spark some new people back into the game especially if you add like guys like wolverine and magneto which were very popular characters back to it in marvel's capcom 2 and then 3 but um I, again it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, yeah it doesn't help when you had the graphics really yeah bad. that's what i was <laughs> gonna say to you they had to patch the graphics we remember that they had to fix chun li mid-game how are you gonna fix one of your freaking franchise that's your <laughs> franchise woman that's capcom's number one woman in that franchise it's her then maybe jill valentine other mm -hmm. than that chung lee is your woman face Number of capcom one. and Number you, one. you and and i i took it offense because capcom is my homie and uh chung lee is my homie like i love mm -hmm. chung lee is probably my favorite female character ever like mm -hmm. that's that was the first character i ever picked in street fighter 2 and mm -hmm. i always had a love for her like i always would try to get good with her always try to use her chung lee being in the game always made me happy because i always loved that character yeah, yeah a lot and of people a lot and of also people. she was the first animated boobs i've seen <laughs> but like <laughs> literally like a lot of people in the same boat but yeah that's the thing i was gonna say was they're gonna have to pass the graphics one more time because they still don't look great and yeah. it's and people have d deep dived into the pc version and it's like no 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 they weren't cheap let's not be you know unfair is that capcom wasn't cheap with the graphics it's the art direction that's bad yeah. When you look at characters like Captain America and Chris Redfield, who have been in other games already, yeah. and you look at the versions in this game, they look terrible. They look, think, they look, it's like a joke. They look terrible. I think they should not never went with the 3D models, and I think they should have kind of went back a step and go back to the 2D style. I agree. I agree. But maybe, maybe I, the 2D animated style, I think, would have captured the audience a lot more stronger than the would. fact that marvel's capcom 2 is still highly regarded over capcom 3 and and 3 is still one of the most like still most played side games at tournaments though it's, it's yeah. never died but the thing is uh and this is what i think that nobody wants to admit is that that game was probably made to be ported to mobile eventually yeah had it not failed so hard because if you look at it it looks like a mobile game it, it looks does. like it's very easily portable to another device. Because it looks like you, that. Um, what you have like to that. do is probably scale down the environments, which yeah. can be done. Because the character models, they ain't that good, dog. Nope. It's like the only ones that I've seen that people have like literally gone back in. Uh, Maximilian did a video not too long ago of he rated all the characters and stuff. And so he sits there and puts them in the, the gallery mode and like zooms in and then basically you know he's capturing the footage so he zooms in again with his actual capture footage and you look at it and you just see a majority of those characters is just that they, they're just made ugly yeah. they're made simple some of them are made simple and it's like why does this character look like this yeah and it's like they look like a cheap mobile character mm -hmm. there's no other way around it um but they they look like the consists of champions more than it looks like a Marvel's cap. I, I agree. So we'll never probably never get an admission of that. But I mean, as far as uncanny version, I hope so. I would love to see the X Men back in that game. You know, I would love to see more people have faith in Marvel again. Please, as a I fighting also, game. Yeah. And I also feel like it, maybe it should have some help in that sense of maybe picking up the gameplay because the gameplay wasn't bad. I think that's what really oh, no, was good really? about the game was the gameplay. It's, it's more the characters and what they look like and yeah. what they 
pure who knew that so so here we go in 2018 we know art direction counts yeah yeah i remember us talking about this at the bar in the winter con Mm, true, true. When we first saw the trailer, and that yeah, was yeah, the yeah, 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 was the graphics like what the fuck? What is this? What is this? Yeah, yeah. The the, the thing is, the gameplay didn't wasn't the the it wasn't the bad part of it. It was everything else beyond the gameplay. They had a good solid gameplay with that game. It's just the fact that they failed in the other parts of it, and I think that it was kind of rushed too. I, I believe so too. I believe it was it was rushed to meet deadlines to match up with movies to come because to come out before movies because they did it they did it with three. It was rushed to come out with move like before movies, not with them because it's not a movie game. Um, what Marvel three had did was it rushed it, and then you find out that the characters they had the reason people found out it was rushed was because they were all cut. Yeah. And then what happens? Then like less than a year later, I think it was. It was un- unheard of that you got Ultimate Marvel three. Yeah. So, again, uh, it's totally possible. It's totally possible that they could do it. But, well, let me ask what your prediction is. Do you think it'll happen? Um, if it does happen, I I actually hope it does because it does the game. That game had potential, and I did enjoy it for what it was. But again, the graphics was just harsh to see but there were some characters look better than the others because i think they were more simplified and to look better like Mega Man looked great yeah uh, sigma looked great yeah. ultron looked great iron man looked yeah. great yeah. um that's true why you look like a mexican he looks like he just but he's one of those characters that look generic and it's yeah. like they changed his model to yeah. make him look like you said simple it's something about him he doesn't look that great i don't know why no, he yeah chris redfield he was in Marvel Three. They had a model for him. They had. A, they had. He's he's Chris. You can't fuck up a core character. He looks terrible. And Captain think, America, yeah. the main Marvel one. I I, I I don't want to make him the picture, but I kind of want to make him the picture for this episode. Is this yeah. so you see how terrible he looks? Ooh. Yeah, Captain America looked bad. Uh, Spider Man was just like a small ass head with a big fucking body. And, but you know what? He he lucked out because his uh, his optional costumes were way better than his default. Yes, he was one of the ones that got cool ass costumes. Right? <coughs> not everybody, uh, not everybody lucked out. Rocket looked great. Nova yeah. looked great. Yeah. Captain Marvel. Nova she looked, looked awesome. Good. Yeah. Nova looked awesome. I think he's a to, for me. He's one of the best best looking characters in that game. His his uh his first DLC costume looks yeah. amazing. Thanos looked great. Uh, Arthur looked great. Uh, Chung Lee needed work, but she looks better now. She looks better now, yeah. Um, but you had a lot of missteps, and if they could do a revamp of a lot of the things, if they could do that in this um, like ultimate version and give it for people that own the game for free to download, mm-hmm. and maybe just add the season to it, that's fine. As long as you fix up your fuck up, I'm fine with the game coming. Yeah. Um... Also, just you can see how much more work was put into the DLC characters too. Yeah, uh, Monster Hunter, Black Panther, Venom, oh, Black Panther. and like you said, Sigma. Yeah, those are the four best-looking characters in the entire game. Yeah, besides Nova for me, but like yeah. those characters, Black Panther, his armor is amazing. Monster Hunter's armor and her Kirin costume, amazing. Venom, like the detail they put into how he moves and how his symbiote moves. Yeah, is. It's like second to none. It's, and then oh, scene, remember, oh. remember the other character I remember who's close to Venom is Jetta. Yeah, it's, yeah. He's like the, for some reason to me to me, Jetta seems to be the character that the game was made for. Yeah. Because the way he moves, the way he animates and everything, he looks perfect. Like yeah, he has the flaws. I, like I, I even like the anti version the anti venom costume. I thought the anti venom yeah. costume was in, in the game as well. Um all right, so we're characters you would like to see in this updated version i'm not gonna say what wolverine i'm not gonna i'm not gonna take the the, the easy way out no 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 core five x-men so i can't say what well, what is it channel five no we'll change the rules no channel five x-men <laughs> can't no say what well, the, the the default team you can say other people like bishop or something but like the core team can't say wolverine rogue gambit beast cyclops storm you just took away like two of them <laughs> I'm just saying, no, but the, but the, like but like literally we you and i both know those are the most popular for yeah. the 90s people for our generation that's like the most popular x-men team channel 5 one so yeah. 
if you cut them out and go from there i'll take cable okay deadpool okay because i love deadpool in three yeah yeah me too me too he's um, one of them three like deadpool. creation wise he they did so much work with him um i will take um x23 i wouldn't mind our back I, she's all right x23 um the catcom side mm-hmm I will take. Hmm. Damn, Capcom is hard. I will take Jin because that was one of my favorite characters. Yeah, in Marvel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I will take him definitely. Captain Commando, I would definitely yeah, take. Yeah, definitely. I still don't know why they didn't bring him back. Captain Kao. I still don't because, know. Because um, Dante stole half his moves. All right, you know what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not for nothing. This is true. I- I'll take Captain C- Commando. And I'll take, uh, uh, you know what? I'll take a rent. I'll take Proto Man. All right. Yeah. Yeah. They've never done it. They've put the costume in, but they've never done the move set. Yes. I will take I Proto Man. I agree. And That's have a good one. play like a mixture of Mega Man and Captain America. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. That, that'll be my six. Uh, six people. I'll pick three, two, three from Marvel, three from uh, Okay. My three, I would pick Bishop as one, Cable as two. I would pick a third see, one. You hmm. see, the thing, oh, like, the only thing I'll say with Cable and Bishop, you could kind of use the same attributes. It's just with Bishop, you could have him absorb. Like that's what I was. That's what I was thinking. I want the I want the new bishop, the one with that nice, the one with the dreads. Yeah, the new suit he wears. Like I want that bishop. Gritty, so like, like those two, I could see very similar to each other. So I say if it's not cable, it'll be bishop, and then they just will add the able to absorb a power and shoot back. No, but I want him stylized because cable has a lineage. Because you, if you remember Marvel two, he gave him stuff that was relevant to his character at the time so if they yeah. make if they put the new cable he would probably be the josh brolin one okay so he was just he's not gonna have scimitar he's not gonna have a baby he <laughs> should he should have hope on his chest yeah I was like, he's not gonna have, not gonna have, well maybe she was in there she died but she you know it wasn't the same he hope sh- he should have yeah. hope on his chest um but like you know, it's gonna be that. It's gonna be that one. That real good <laughs> thing, but... dude. He could use her as a defense. So if gonna... he had like hope on her chest, right? Yo, I'm gonna go out on a limb. Stick, he'll stick his chest out, and they will like back up because of the baby there. I was gonna say there might be a version <laughs> of the Mugen of a cable with her. Yeah, there might be. <laughs> It might be. Uh, I gotta look that up now. See? All right. All right. So you have Bishop Cable. I got Bishop Cable. Um, the third one, I was thinking Domino, but I don't want to just be so close to that world. Um, so instead of Domino. And then I also was... Domino will be in, in the mix of Cable and Winter Soldier. But she was just, she's just, just X Force. You know what I mean? She's just X Force. Yeah, yeah. A girl with guns. Yeah. But I would like to see what they do with her power, with her luck. Because I want to see things miss, but I would. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say. It. I would say Shadow Cat because she's never been in a fighting game. That'd be interesting. Like I, I want to see what they do with a character that can face through two people. That'd be interesting. I give you credit for that. I like that one. Um, for Capcom side, Jin is one of the ones I wanted regardless. Um, because I really like his character and the and the mech. Yeah. Um. You already have Dante, so that's like half the wish list, right? There. <laughs> so, um, I would say no, no Virgil. He's already been here. Somebody else that hasn't had a chance to be. Um, I'm trying to think of a Capcom character that hasn't had a chance to be in a. Mm. Damn, dude, it's hard to think of a character that's not hasn't been in one. You know, uh, just thinking about it, just thinking about it, Cody was never in these Marvel's Capcom games. Neither was Guy. He was in my head too. I would say Cody or Guy. I would say Guy probably fits more because he could combo wise. He has a lot yeah. more going. But I wouldn't mind putting all both of them. Oh, I was gonna say Maki. That's what I was gonna say. 
the the blind the blind ninja. She's from Final Fight Two. She's in um SNK versus Capcom Two. Okay. I would put her in because she hasn't been in a versus game. Um, damn, but I'm really trying to think of a of, of a bad guy or something from maybe Doctor Wily. I feel Wily would be cool if he had like a suit. If he has the skull thing that he's always in, and you could change it, it changes depending on like different like configurations and shit. It'd be like the chick from Capcom Two. Uh, her name. Oh yeah, Trombon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. But well, he could fly. He'd be like Modok, whereas like he could fly around it at will. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, but yeah, Doctor Wally. After all this time, Doctor Wally, why not? That's our quick Proto Man. He's like, I'm a really big fan of Proto Man, and he's never in the game. They are too, <laughs> which is this is crazy. They are too. They keep putting this costume in there. Frank West has a Proto Man costume. Yeah. Like zero, no Mega Man has one, and Frank was. Come on, stop it. I'll put him back Phoenix right. Hmm. I like Phoenix right. I like him too. I like his character too. And it was always cool as shit seeing somebody combo into his level three. Yeah. The objection. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah. No, that's that's my wish list. That's my wish list. I can't really think of too many other people. Um, I was gonna say Alex from Third Strike, sure, but whatever. If it's Third Strike, Alex, and not. Yeah, if he can parry and is good, sure. Because <laughs> he was in Tatsunoko, so he he was okay in that game. Yeah. But they were characters that were way better, you know. So, um, but you know that's about it. Um, the other news I had, sorry, I just went. Uh, go away from this one to the other Capcom news I had was that uh, just a reminder starting next week it'll be the 13th I believe yes, yes next Friday uh, that's the, the start date for the next the summer event for Monster Hunter okay. also they're going to have a stream next week uh, I believe it's Capcom Unity is going to have a stream but uh, not 100% on that it might be Capcom Japan that they're gonna have a oh and they're also having a contest uh time trial attack for Monster Hunter World Championships which is pretty cool. cool um and this is all gonna coincide next week with that event but they're also doing ga- a gameplay reveal I believe gameplay reveal for Behemoth from Final Fantasy so that's the next big um you know next monster to be added to the game to be uh fightable Okay. And it's that giant. I'm sure you've seen the trailer. It's like the giant beast that comes yes. from the meteor. Yeah. Yes, actually, uh, looks so cool. next week is when that starts. Is when everything is gonna start uh, unveiling itself. Japan's getting uh, the reveal first and gameplay first. Also, they that's the other thing. They're detailing the 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 actual release date for the PC version finally, cool. finally. So now we'll know. People were speculating that it was gonna be August. Who knows? It could be. So we have enough time so the 13th is going to be a, a a big dump of information so make sure you stay tuned to all the official capcom channels and stuff so if you're interested in that cool sounds good sounds good mm-hmm. uh, also let's just say skull girls and more fighting game news skull girls is coming to nintendo switch that's a yeah, good thing yeah, yeah that that's and dragon ball fighters yeah they're finally gonna do see this is what happens now i appreciate namco being uh, a company of their word. They said if we bring out Xenoverse 2 and people pay attention to it and buy it, that uh, Dragon Ball Fighters is coming. I guess people must have held up their end of the bargain because it's coming. Yeah, it did so really well on the Switch. So there you go. So See, I always like when they do that. I mean, it doesn't work out because there's one, I don't know if you know about it, uh, during the PS3 era. Um, maybe a little more, a little bit before uh, PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, Capcom had did a uh, an experiment with uh, Darkstalkers. Okay. And they released a really, really good HD uh, collection. That yeah, was, I got it. There's the two, the two second games. Mm-hmm. I think I had the first one was was a secret game or one of the it games. Was for, was it was for the PSP. It was for everything. 
it was on every system and that was actually an experiment and they said that if this sells well we will be working on dark stalkers 4 and it didn't do well at all and unfortunately to this day no dark stalkers so god damn it fans if you want something buy it when they tell you to it was cheap it was 10 bucks yes and it was worth it it was fucking worth it. that's probably not for nothing and i don't want to go on a long tangent but not for nothing, that's probably the best HD release Capcom has done. Re-release that they've done. It had the best netcode for no reason. And it had so many little uh, intricacies and details in there. It had like a cool ass splash page. It lets you very easily switch between games. Like there was so much right with that thing. So I really am sad that it didn't get it. There's no Dark Star Wars 4. Yeah. And even dumb teasing costumes in Street Fighter, like it doesn't help. <laughs> nah, not anymore. Cause you know they give anybody costumes, but they gonna give Chun Li twenty nine. Just gonna keep putting that out there. <laughs> ah, every month, I swear Chun Li gets like two costumes. Yeah, that game's been out for like t- two years almost. Yeah. And she, I swear, no lie, she's got like 30 costumes, 30, 40 costumes. Yep. Yep, yep. Anyway, um, um, got anything else? Um, NES Classic. I got myself in my hands at NES Classic Edition. Nice. Um, so, they just, they just re-rele- re-released them uh, recently. Uh, they just restocked them in the door, so they were easy to get, but maybe hard to get now because they're, they, a lot of people grabbed them. No, my uh, question to you is: Have they done anything to them? Have they uh, huh? changed? They haven't changed up the games in the, the time span or anything to like no, make it exclusive. Same. It's the same no. one. Okay. Same okay. exact. Yeah, same exact. Nice. Same exact model. Um, same exact shit. That even the same exact flaws. Um, the wire is too short. You need to get a wire. Oh. Okay, so it was just. Do you know if it was like just back stock and they just hadn't sold it? Like they they were hiding them or something. They were like, oh shit. I think <laughs> is the fact that they didn't. Stopped. I think the, the fact that they didn't expect it to sell the way it did. Of course not. And then they were like, oh shit, it's, we actually got something here. But damn, then, like that was like a year? How do you remember? Two years ago. Two years, years ago. ago. So, because NES came out last year. Did they NES have a NES. re-release? Did they have a re-release in, in any other period before now? No. Wow. Wow. This is the first time it's back. Uh, 30 games in it. Um, I've been reading this very easy to hack to 700 games, but 30 base games that are in it are Balloon Fight, uh, Bubble Bobble, Castlevania 1 and 2, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Double Dragon 2, The Revenge, uh, Dr. Mario, Excite Bike, which is probably one of my favorite games, um, Final Fantasy, uh, Dagula, Ghosts and Goblins, Gratis, uh, Ice. Climbers, uh, Kid Icarus, Kirby Adventure, Mario Brothers, Mario Mega Man 2. Uh, Mario Brothers is the one that's kind of like Donkey Kong uh, that you have to uh, just clear off the stage. That's the Mario Brothers that they have here. Uh, mm-hmm. Mario 2, Metroid, Ninja Gaiden, Pac Man, uh, Punch Out, featuring Mr. Dream because Mike Tyson is copyright. And he Star went to jail. <laughs> Star Tropics, Super C, Super Contra. Uh, Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2, Super Mario Brothers 3, Tekken Bow. Tekken Bow is probably one of my favorite football games. Uh, Legend of Zelda and Legend of Zelda 2, Adventures of Those other 30 games are based in this package. Uh, right now, you could possibly still get it on Best Buy, uh, Walmart, GameStop, and I've seen them in, the st- in Target. So you may be able to still get them. They're about 60 bucks each. Mm-hmm. Uh, better than spending $150. I'm enjoying it. The H- it works great with the HDMI. Uh, looks like the old school, but looks really nice on your TV, uh, flat screen TV. Um, they did not add any games that took the gun apparel or anything like that. Oh, yeah, the fact yeah. that um, um, out on HD screens, the gun would not work. You need a tube TV in order to do those. Yeah, that, okay. that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. My question is? Is your favorite Nintendo game of all time on there? Uh, Mario 3. Ah, okay. All right, so... Yes. yes. Super Mario Brothers 3 is probably my favorite Nintendo game I, of all time. I think that... For me, that's pretty much a lock. I'm trying to think if there's anything that's number two. Maybe... Mega Man 2. 
oh yeah, we were having a discussion before we went on that I've I was a weird Nintendo owner that never owned a Mega Man game. Yeah. On Nintendo. So I never got to experience the magic. I only played Mega Man on Game Boy, which is odd. Um so your number one is I'm trying to think if I have a uh, I really like Turtles 3. I have, an, I have an unnatural like for that game. My only problem with Turtles 3, it was false advertising. Yeah, Triceraton, where you at, dog? Yes. <laughs> yes, uh, Mark, uh, Mark in the mic on uh, one of my old videos at the whole gameplay of Turtles mm-hmm. 3, and there was no uh, Triceraton. I didn't fight none nope. of them. But they're on the cover. She's looking badass and everything. Yeah. <laughs> that was just like a tease. That was just a fucked up tease. Okay. And follow up question. Do you remember? Can you can you clearly remember in your head? What is your worst Nintendo game? My worst? Uh, my least favorite. If you can remember or if you still even have that thought. I don't have it. But don't have the it. worst game I played. I, the worst game I played, I think, was Dirty Harry. Oh damn, that is a good one. That was wow. very, very, very bad. If I have to pick, I would say it's terrible and I liked it for the time, but going back to it, I know it's just god awful. Uh Dick Tracy. That was pretty bad as well. That was that was an awful game. I the key uh secret? I was a child of Game Genie. So I had a game genie and all those games I could never beat, I beat every one of them. <laughs> Just put on the infinite lives code or the invincibility yeah. code. So I beat Dick Tracy. I beat it the hard way. <laughs> so a great thing about the um, Restaurant 5 is the fact that they give you the option of cheat codes. Really? Yes. Yeah, so there's an option if the if it's the game if it's inside the game, they do have um, codes built inside so you can actually use the cheat codes hmm wow that's actually pretty cool yes it's very good yeah is it has there any has there accurately been an emulation of a game genie yet um no because that's the one of the ones that has me thinking like man that would be cool yeah no one has the last one was um game shark and uh what was a code breaker and that was on the ps2 well they have i have one for dreamcast yeah but see that was do you, you want to know a story about pso before we wrap this up so we all remember the game fantasy star online for dreamcast right yes uh, it was one of, it was ahead of his time it was one of the first console you know just online connected console games period because of the dreamcast um there's a little bit of unspoken history about that game. There was a point in which, after the Game Shark came out, this is before hacking, yeah. uh, large scale hacking, where there were codes that even make you invincible, gave you infinite money, blah, blah, blah. There was also some codes that could kill other players. <laughs> because because there was a, a verse, there was a versus mode in, in Fantasy Star. It was coded in. I don't know if, they, I don't remember ever playing it um in the first one but it, you could lock onto other players via this code and stuff and you could do damage with the game the game shark and it just became wildly known as pk yeah. and that's kind of the first time i ever heard that because i never played any pc games so people were getting so it was terrible because in the original pso when you die you drop everything on the spot like that was yeah. the downside to dying so you couldn't just do it over and over again um and what people would do was, if you didn't lock your room, and this is before it got really bad, because then there was no bypassing it. There was bypassing everything. So at one point, you couldn't even lock your room. But in the beginning, this is the first version. Uh, if you didn't lock your room, a player would come in your room. This is before they started putting PK in their name to alert you to their presence, mind you. There'd just be a random person comes in, maybe says hi, maybe doesn't. Um, and you just think you put a pipe down, which is the custom for PSO, because the pipe takes them to where you last were, right? They would come down and just kill you and take your shit. <laughs> and fucking leave. And in PSO, you can't do anything. Once you're dead, if you don't have a skate doll, you don't come back to life. 
you stay on the ground and either somebody has to use an item to revive you or you have to go back up. So you could literally have a blood red screen where you just see your killer standing there over your dead body, looking at your dropped stuff. And if you had a rare weapon, say goodbye to it. It was gone. <laughs> so eventually PSO became the Wild West, where it was if you didn't have a game shark, you were fucked. Oh, so I had to buy a game shark to keep playing that game safely. That's how bad it gets. <laughs> That's fucked up. That's rough. Like, I remember ha there was a literal anti-PK code. I had to put that on when I played sometime, and it happened. There was also the reverse PK code, and I did that too. When somebody PKs you, they die. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, there was so crazy. There was also a code to where when you came into somebody's room, the game froze. There was tons of bad shit going on in that game. Damn, that's thanks to, crazy. Thanks to Game Shark. Thanks to Game Shark. Uh, so... Yeah, dude. Like I had, I had a rough time with Game Shark in my day. In my day, I had to use it. It was like a gun. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I had to be a responsible gun owner. Oh, I couldn't man. run around PKing people. I did it once. I did do it once yeah. just to see if it worked. I did do it once. That's but I let I let the person know though. But but like yeah, and then came duping, and then came all the, the stuff that you didn't need Game Shark with, so you could protect yourself that way. Yeah. But yeah, it was shit dude it was a war zone at one point um see this is why you can't have nice things kids because people will come in <laughs> just to fuck with you just just take it all that's fine anyway yep. this has been another episode of the get this better i swear podcast thank you okay. for listening um please stay tuned uh to the our youtube channels that is merc with the mic and red cyclone inc uh Merck is currently doing all types of stuff but right now he is doing some far cry what you say dlc yeah far cry no. Viet vietnam um and i had just finished a lost planet one playthrough mm -hmm. so if you want to see lost planet one and two you can check out check that out on red cyclone eight um we were talking about it so last week i actually tracked down a copy of ps3 um dragon's crown so we have that ready to rock Yep. I'm going to be putting some stuff up with that. Um, and that's about it. Going on for the channel. Um, you can also catch these podcasts on our YouTube channels as well as our SoundClouds, which are also Merc with the Mic and Red Cyclonic. Yes. Um, also, we did a Wrestling Babble podcast earlier. And there's also the Wrestling Babble Facebook. Yes. So make sure you check that out. It's going to be real, going to be real active because next week is a pay per view. Yes. So there are going to be active polls the day, the evening of. So make sure you check that out. Um, Wrestling Babble and the Wrestling Babble podcast. Um, and make sure you catch us and everything we do on Rest Cyclonic on uh, just about everything. We have, uh, besides YouTube, we have Tumblr, we have Instagram, we have Twitter, we have WordPress, and we have the SoundCloud. Facebook. Also, also the Rest Cyclonic Facebook group. Yes, this is true. Forever, forever in a day, I'm gonna be. I keep forgetting it. <laughs> um, but like I said, make sure you catch us on everything. Red Cyclone Inc. So there's no confusion, and Mark with the mic. So there's no confusion. Yes. And that's it. That is Thanks it. for listening. And always remember, follow Jenkins. And don't forget them sandwiches. Yes. Just eat maybe, anything. Maybe like a roast beef with like a mustard cheese or something. I like a roast something, beef. something fragrant. You yes. know what I mean? He smells it and he gets it. He starts following you. Don't slow down. Don't slow down for him to catch up. You might eat that same. Yep. Let's be the end of your song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you. Later. Break my spirit. Hey, nothing can break my spirit. My spirit is too strong. Indestructible, nobody's taking.